Welcome to Broncos Weekend, presented by Ent Credit Union, the official banking partner of the Denver Broncos. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special post-game edition of Broncos Weekend. I am your host and Denver Broncos team reporter, Elisa Hernandez. Later in the show, we will be joined by lead writer on DenverBroncos.com, Eric Zalala, who was in New Orleans for Thursday Night Football. Plus, Hall of Famer Steve Atwater and former Bronco and ESPN analyst Orlando Franklin will also stop by the studio in just a bit. The Denver Broncos improved to 4-3 on the season after defeating the New Orleans Saints on the road, the Saints dropping to 2-5 on the year. This was the first primetime game of the season for Denver in this team's first head-to-head matchup since 2020 versus the Saints. Head coach Sean Payton returned to the city where he was a head coach for 15 years. Overall, the Broncos now lead the series with the Saints with a 10-3 record, including a 5-1 record in New Orleans. For more, we head out to the Big Izzy to check in with DenverBroncos.com lead writer Eric Delala at Caesars Superdome. Thanks, Elisa. The Broncos with a 33-10 win down here in New Orleans. They get a big win in prime time down in the Bayou, and it was a complete win, really. Uh, the Broncos ran the ball incredibly well, their most rushing yards in a game since all the way back in 2013. They ran it effectively. Javante Williams leading the team in rushing yards. Bo Nix adding some uh, plays with his legs as well. And then the defense did what we've gotten used to the defense doing all season long. Uh, They were able to get after Spencer Rattler. They pressured him, they got sacks. Uh, They had a strip sack early in the game that helped add to an early lead for the Broncos. And then late in the game, Cody Barton off a uh, corner blitz is able to get the ball, return it for a touchdown that helped add the final margin here for the Broncos. Again, it was what you needed after a loss to the Chargers to be able to bounce back, come get a win, and find a way to improve to four and three on the season. It's the Broncos' third double-digit win of the year. Uh, They didn't get that until all the way near the end of last year when they finally got their third double-digit win of the season. Sean Payton in his return to New Orleans all week long said that it wasn't about uh, his time here, that there would be emotions and all of that. But ultimately, he said it was about getting the win. The Broncos were able to do that. Bo Nix, no turnovers, had a couple that may have been close, uh, but he was able to lead this team, make some nice passes. And really, after a couple times this season where the Broncos struggled in the first half offensively, they were really able to get off to a quick start. A 6-0 lead with a couple of field goals, but then early in the second quarter, they add a touchdown as Javante Williams barrels into the end zone. Again, he was impressive. He had his first multi-rushing touchdown performance of his career on this night. And the Broncos from there, that's all they really needed to do. They held a 16-3 lead at halftime. Uh, They really were ahead by double digits for most of this one. And late in the game, uh, excuse me, the Saints did get on the board and were able to get a touchdown to give the final margin here. But overall, a a dominant performance. There were let's go Broncos cheers ringing out late in the game. And this team really showed you what it needed to as the offense played well, the defense able to force some turnovers, rattle a rookie quarterback in Spencer Rattler the way you hoped they would be able to do that. And in prime time, the Broncos find a way to get a big win. Let's send it back to you in the studio, Elisa. Thanks, Eric. We'll check back in later in the show. Going into the matchup, head coach Sean Payton spoke about handling the emotions of returning to New Orleans for the first time as head coach of the Denver Broncos. After the game, Payton spoke about going back to New Orleans and more following the Broncos win. You know, obviously it was a good team win. Um, we did we did a lot of things well tonight um, that, you know, statistically we talk about. Um, and... You know, you're always adjusting and getting used to the short week schedule when you're at home, the short week schedule when you're on the road. We talked all week about a fast start. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought they, they handled the mental part of it um, relative to um, – it's just easy to complain on a short week, and then pretty soon no one really cares. So uh, I thought our preparation for those two days was good. I didn't want to go through all the stats with them, but first half leads, uh, I've said this, I think I said it to you guys, um, you know, fare better for those teams. And then, um, yeah, I think for me, I, didn't, I know I wasn't going to tell them that, you know, my teams are 
us, we were 5-0 and with the lead and 0-5 when we didn't have one. That's the last thing I wanted to mention to them. Um, but I thought we ran the ball well, of course. Um, defensively, man, we, we had pressure. Um, you know, they're nicked up. And I told DA, get healthy, because, you know, they have a good football team, and there are a lot of their players right now uh, uh, weren't able to play. So, um, but overall, pleased with uh, how we played. The, um, even though they're nicked up, there's no feeling sorry for teams in the NFL. No, listen, it's just the business we're in. in you just play. Um, you know, you have injuries. It's, 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 it's really the truth. No one else outside the building, you know, cares. They just, you know, at the end of the day, they, uh, they want to see the end result, and I understand it. The, uh, the broadcast showed you receiving the game, the game ball. What did that mean to you? It meant a lot. I think, fortunately, and I say this respectfully, I mean, it was just two days of prep and we're here, and so not a lot of sleep. And so it, um, it kind of, I think, um, it keeps your mind off of it because you, there's so many things you have to get done. And my big concern was just not having enough rest. And so I slept today for a while and then came over here early just to uh, um, kind of get, you know, get started um, going through the, the game plan again. Um, it, but it meant a lot. Um, because you know there there were a lot of you know moments here, and you get a chance to see old players that are you know that are here, and and then to be with this team and uh, this ownership group, um, it's the it's the reason you miss it. You know the one year out, and you miss uh, relationships, and you miss making memories. Um, you know I, it it's it's. Uh, it's like I told him a couple of weeks ago, Sertan's interception, you know, right in front of our bench. Um, there'll be a day when I don't remember his name and, you know, I'm having applesauce out of a straw, but I'll remember that play. And uh, so that part of it, being around young people and uh, having a chance to um, be part of their journey and coach, coach them uh, is a pretty good job. And uh, I'm thankful for it. So. Um, yeah, it was kind of emotional. When we come back, we will check in one more time with Eric Dalala in New Orleans and hear what quarterback Bo Nix had to say following the Broncos' road win. That's coming up next. Bank better with Broncos checking from Ent Credit Union, the official banking partner of the Denver Broncos. Back here on Broncos weekend, a 33 to 10 win. I am lead writer Eric Dalala down here in New Orleans at the Caesars Superdome and the Broncos. We talked a little bit before about them getting this win to improve to four and three. Here's what it means now. The Broncos have won four games in their last five tries. They've recovered from an 0-2 start. They found a way to put themselves back in playoff position. And perhaps most importantly, they found a way to respond to a tough loss last week against the Chargers. And to be able to get back in the win column, that is important. As we now look ahead, the Broncos will have a chance to get to 5-3 and three and two games over 500 as they take on the Carolina Panthers next week at Empower Field at Mile High. It, again, it would be their fifth win in six tries if they're able to get a win next week against the Panthers. For the Broncos, they'll have a chance to see if Bo Nix can keep improving, did some nice things with his legs on Thursday night, obviously struggled at times in the passing game, but was able to make more than enough plays to earn the win. And defensively, we'll see if this team can stack another performance. They got back to playing the way we are used to seeing this Denver defense perform here in New Orleans. A lot to look forward to. This uh, it, Early in the season, it's hard to call anything a must win, but it did feel the way the Saints were as banged up as they are. Uh, in an emotional game, certainly with Sean Payton returning to New Orleans. With all of those factors, it felt like a game that the Broncos needed to win. They did. They came in here and earned a double-digit win, a win of more than 20 points, 33-10. to 10. And now they are uh, headed for a little bit of a mini-buy. They'll get back to work early next week, and then they'll take a look ahead to the Carolina Panthers and try to push their winning streak to two games. With that, let's send it back to you in the studio, Elisa. 
Thanks, Eric. Before the Broncos had a happy flight home, quarterback Bo Nix spoke to the media following the Broncos' win over the Saints. You know, you want to run the ball, you know, run it backs in special ways and, you know, get behind the O-line. But at times things break down and those, you know, hidden yards, I think, are really important. They, you know, get extra first downs and just there's ways to, you know, sneak some yards in. And so that was good and good to see, um, good to use. And, you know, got to continue to do that when it's there. Oh, well, you heard Cody say that he's going to spend more time thinking about that picky drop. So do you think about good plays or the, the couple throws that got away from you? Does that stick with you? Yeah, I think about um, the ones that I could have back. Uh, you know, I think that's just competitive nature for guys. Um, but you do want to give yourself some grace. Um, you know, at times, you, you, you know, they, they're obviously, you know, trying to keep you from doing all the good stuff. So, um, you know, you, you live and you learn and you continue to work. And um, nobody's ever played a perfect game. So I think that's why we're all still here trying to figure it out. And we just continue to move forward. Uh, obviously, the most important thing is winning the game. And uh, when you beat a team like that, with really good players and um, you know that big of a margin is it's really good. Um, good to see all the guys um, you know play and play well. Speaking of winning, you have just tied John Elway and Drew Locke for the most wins from a Broncos rookie quarterback. Uh, what does that mean, especially doing that so quickly, only seven? It means a lot. You know those. Um, you know you're talking about you know one of the greats to, to ever do it at our, at our uh, organization and. Um, you know, it, it means a lot. You know, you're in great company. Obviously, the job's, you know, not finished. We have a lot in front of us. Um, so definitely don't want to stop there. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to get better as a team. I'm going to continue to, to grow and learn as a player. And, um, you know, hopefully we continue to have wins like this. When the, one for both. when the passing game is sometimes having some rough moments, how much does it kind of help to get things on track that you have the ability to take off and get an explosive play on the ground with your I think it's really good. Um, all explosive runs are really good. Um, I wouldn't say the pass game was, um, you know, bad by any means today. Uh, we hit the big ones we needed, um, but we just ran the ball. So when you, when you can run the ball, it's, it's obviously easier that way. Um, and, you know, it just opens up everything else. Um, and so, again, we got three points in a two-minute drill. That was really good. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to find ways to, you know, have explosive plays. When we come back, I'll be joined by Hall of Famer Steve Atwater and former Bronco and ESPN analyst Orlando Franklin as we reveal our favorite moments from the past six weeks and look ahead to the Broncos' next home game. Stick with us. Welcome back to Broncos Weekend. We are more than a quarter through the 2024 NFL season, and I think it's time to look back at some of our favorite moments from the year so far. Joining me now is Hall of Famer Steve Atwater and former Bronco and ESPN analyst Orlando Franklin. Welcome, guys. Thanks so much. We're happy to be here. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. We talked it over and put together a top five best moments from week one to week six. So coming in at number five, it was alumni weekend and we have so many greats come to Empower Field at Mile High. And then we have Riley Moss's first career interception. Pocket starts to break down, throws a ball that is going to be picked off at the 40. That is Riley Moss. How special is that? Uh, it was super special. I think it was a special moment for two Rileys, uh, Riley Odoms getting into uh, the Broncos ring of fame. And then, of course, Riley Moss with the great interception. His first NFL interception. You know, Riley Moss goes out there and gets it done, right? And is able to, you know, have a huge impact play on the game in those dope jerseys, looking to try to, you know, grab a helmet or two out of a locker, some socks, <laughs> whatever I could get my hands on. Definitely the freshest jerseys we've seen them play, play in all season. But the atmosphere was energetic and it just became contagious. You saw good play after good play and Riley Moss had a heck of a play that day. Coming in at number four, it's a little two for one special because we had two big road wins, one against the Bucks and then one against the Jets. I mean, just the fact that the Broncos were able to go on the road and get these two wins after starting season 0-2. And a pleasant good morning, everybody, and welcome to Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa, Florida, as the Denver Broncos in search of their first win of the season on the road. You know, usually road trips are kind of tough, but they took that those, those road trips as a chance to bond as a team, brought those guys closer together. Uh, they got some great work done while they were out there and came home with two victories. And that's, that's very difficult to do, yeah. mind you. Anytime you could impact a team, right? You, you look at what the Broncos did against the Bucks. That there's a lot of question marks. They go out there, they hit them in the mouth, and now the Bucks have a lot of questions, right? Then the following week, it's the exact same thing that happened to the Jets, and you have Aaron Rodgers looking around like he, he's seeing ghosts out there. So I, I think it's 
two really good games where the offense played off of the defense and, and vice versa. And to string together some wins and win on the road, it's the toughest thing in the National Football League. Yeah, and shout out to Justin Sternad for getting that uh, sack against And everybody Aaron was Rogers. questioning, <laughs> wondering how he was going to do, and he got it started <laughs> off with the bang. He did. And after the game, he said that he actually has some family in Green Bay, and he said that he had a rub it in their face. He said, I'm going to have something good to talk about uh, at the Thanksgiving dinner table. So coming in at number three, we have Bo Nix, his first career touchdown and his first passing touchdown of his career. Two big plays from the quarterback. Nix takes a shotgun snap, looks left. Now flush, rolls to his right. Nix at the 10, pumps once to the 5, pumps again. Pirouettes and rolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. Just an unbelievable play by Bo Nix, right? You go to play in Seattle, one of the hardest places to play. You can't even hear yourself think. And I love that little pump fake right there at the three-yard line, yeah. the spin in the yeah. end zone, right? And got defensive players that know he's not going to yeah. he's not gonna pass. Right? <laughs> pass the line of scrimmage. <laughs> not only is he passing the line of scrimmage, like, like where he's going to throw the ball <laughs> right. to, right? As a quarterback, the cardinal rule, you don't throw the ball back across your body right there. There's only about five yards of space, but yet Bo Nix comes up with a very crafty vet move. You've been there before now. Any other time, you're, you're able to use your legs and get in the end zone. You've already been there a couple times. Nix takes a shotgun snap, four-man rush, throws back in the end zone, Sutton's there, makes the catch, touchdown Denver! A touchdown pass of eight yards, Bo Nix throwing his first NFL touchdown pass. Man, the passing touchdown to Cortland Sutton, uh, that was huge, huge for him, and it was great that Cortland was so unselfish. <laughs> he immediately took the ball and, and handed it to uh and He to called him over. He was yes, like, yes, here we go. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's take, take this. This is going to be something that you're going to cherish for a long time. Yeah, well, if you want the ball more, right, and you want more targets, right, you <laughs> got to take the ball right? <laughs> you know, so I, I'm not mad at court for that. Well, coming in at number two, someone who's really comfortable with the Enzo, Corlin Sutton with the one-handed touchdown against the Chargers. Knicks takes a low snap. Throws the uh, sluggo route right side. Sutton goes up and makes the catch. Sutton came down with the ball. A little deja vu action. I feel like he's done that before. Yeah, it's just amazing. Whenever he plays against the Chargers, he seems, seems to make these circus catches. <laughs> uh, these are catches that uh, not many people can make. And for him to hit the ground as hard as he hits the ground, I, I think on every one of those passes, I thought, man, that ball had to move. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. <laughs> yeah. man, he must have some huge hands or just a tight grip or something mm -hmm. to be able to keep that ball in there. But, man, some amazing plays that he's made, and that was a big one. Uh, there against the Chargers. Mm -hmm. yeah, unbelievable ball placement by Bo Nix. Puts it only where Cortland Sutton could get it. Mm -hmm. And Cortland does a, a exceptional job of tracking the football with that one big old paw and bring it in. So just a, a great momentum building play where you're saying, Let, let's, how do we get a couple more of these, right? We, we know that we have the guys that can make these plays moving forward. Well, coming in at number one, of course, we have Pat Sertan II swapping jerseys pregame with Hall of Famer Champ Bailey. And then you go out and get a pick six versus the Raiders in the throwbacks. We had to go back to this game. There were just so many amazing plays. Now floats one too high. It's going to be intercepted at the goal line. Down the west sideline, intercepted. This is Pat Sertan. Sertan's going to house call it. 25-20, 15-10, five touchdown. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing play. And... Pastor Tan showed us, hey, I, I didn't come here just to swap jerseys with the champ, <laughs> but also came out here to put in work. And, man, he did that. Uh, just a beautiful interception. It was on the same side of the field as Champs was, but just going in the opposite direction. <laughs> just uh, just, just a, a great moment, a great, great day for him. And those are the kind of plays, plays that he can make. He, he's done it before, and I think he'll do it many more times in the future. That was my favorite play. <laughs> so it's number yeah, one. Oh, it's it, it, number yeah, one. <laughs> it, it, it's my favorite play because you look at the defense, it's all 11 guys working together, right? Defensive line gets great pressure, is able to get Minshew to get out of the pocket, right? And PS2 steps right in front of that football. And you, you see it on the sidelines, right? Offensive players cheering him on because we don't got to go back out there after that, right? <laughs> he gets the touchdown, and it's like, yeah, you guys come out. out here and get a little bit of water and get back out there while we hang out on the sidelines. So love when defensive players are able to make such a huge impactful play. Like and that the crazy thing about that play, too, is he wasn't – even covering the guy that uh, Minshew was throwing the ball to. Yeah. He just happened to be in the right place at the right times. And many times, a lot of the big, great players are able to do that. They're able to put themselves 
the right place at the right time. Yeah, completely changed the game completely. That was a moment that really kind of sparked the, the Broncos to really come back and win that game. So what a play at number one. And Pastor Chan the second has been incredible this year. Now, he was out for week seven due to a concussion, but looking at the body of work that he's been able to put out through the first six weeks, could you guys all see a defensive player of the year in his future? I know it's a little early. But yeah, you know, it's definitely we gotta little, talk about it. It's definitely a little bit early, but he's he's doing the things that he has to do to to earn that 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 great honor. He continues to make those plays week after week, year after year, and as long as he stays healthy, hey, he'll be he'll be available to do, to do those things. He's gonna have to get lucky. <laughs> and, 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 and when I say lucky, I mean it's quarterbacks underestimated him and throwing it at him like continuing to throw at him he is so unique and such a great player that he has the ability to take one of the best players for an offense out of a game mm -hmm. so you know he's gonna have to get lucky where quarterbacks are saying man i can make this throw yeah and because i know that he can make that play and if he continues to you know continues to add to the interception category, absolutely. He could definitely, at the end of the season, be getting a, a, another accolade and hang, adding something to the trophy case at home. Yeah, he's definitely been putting on a clinic of how to cover number one wide receivers in this league. Now, the Broncos look ahead to week eight, where they will host their final home game of October, welcoming the Carolina Panthers. It will actually be the team's Vamos Broncos game, celebrating their fanaticos and Hispanic heritage. How much are you guys looking forward to that game? Man, that's, that's such a huge game. Um, and just the meaning of it, too. I remember uh, going to Mexico. We played the home market area game there several years ago and man we had such a treat there the fans are so embracing of, <laughs> of the Broncos and it's just, it's just a beautiful thing so I'm, I'm super excited for that game as well just being able to embrace that community is a great thing for all organizations not just the Denver Broncos well Broncos country make sure you guys head out early to enjoy all the festivities of our Vamos Broncos game and that will do it for this edition of Broncos weekend for Hall of Famer Steve Atwater former Bronco and ESPN analyst Orlando Franklin and lead writer for DenverBroncos.com Eric Dalala. I am your host and Denver Broncos team reporter, Elisa Hernandez, and this was Broncos Weekend. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.